Assalamu alaikum parents and students. This is the first lesson of English for your distant learning. The story is Yonder Mountain. It's a Cherokee legend and I suggest you read the story first in your journeys book before moving on. Parents, you'll find that there is a lesson plan attached. In the lesson plan, you have the standards, you have the lesson overview, the success criteria, and some steps to help you work with us to ensure that your child is hitting all the required targets. We also have the PowerPoint presentation, which I will be going over, and there is a worksheet with the answer key. So make sure you look over all of those attachments. Alrighty, so let's start with the PowerPoint. It will have three parts. The first is a vocabulary skill. The second is phonics. We'll be going over contractions. The third part is grammar. We'll be covering articles. Alrighty, so skill one for Yonder Mountain is vocabulary. We are going to identify and explain the meanings of the target vocabulary words. So you guys can hit this link over here to go to YouTube. There's a video you can watch to review the vocabulary. And I'm going to review them with you right now. So the first word is fondly. When we do something fondly, it means we do it in a loving or caring way. So you can see that the girl over here is hugging her dog. You can say she is hugging the dog fondly. She is hugging him in a loving, caring way. A mist is our second word. Mist is a fine spray or a light fog. You can see that over here and over here in these two pictures. The mist is clear. Next word is peak. The peak is the top of a mountain or a hill. You can see over here, this is the peak of the mountain, and there are some peaks of some mountains up here. Next word is rugged. When something is rugged, it means it is rough and uneven. You can see it's not smooth, right? There are some bumps. The climber is trying to get over them. This is a rugged slope. Slope is another word, so make sure you keep that one in mind. Over here is also rugged. It means it is not smooth. It's very rough. You can see how the water is moving roughly around. It is moving in a rugged way. Next word is pausing. Now, some of you will already know how to pause a video. You can actually go ahead and pause this video if you want. When you pause something, it means you are stopping it briefly. Steep is our next word. When something is steep, it means it has a sharp slope. Do you see how the slope, it goes up really, really fast? It doesn't go over smoothly. It just goes up really sharply. Alrighty, so that's the word steep. Next word is examined. You can see over here we have a detective and she's examining a letter. Maybe she's trying to find clues. Maybe you have been examining this PowerPoint for a little bit to figure out what it is you need to learn. When you examine something, it means you look at it closely. And you can see she's looking at it closely to find out some clues. Next word is pleaded. If someone pleaded, it means they begged or requested urgently. Do you see how this dog over here is begging? And this person over here, he is begging his computer. Maybe he doesn't want his computer to shut down. Maybe you pleaded your parents to not make you do any homework during the break. Alrighty, and on the last part of the vocabulary, you guys can go to the online game over here. You can hit this link and you can play the game to make sure you've got your vocabulary down. Alrighty, so our second skill is going to be our phonics and we're going to be covering contractions. We are going to try to identify, make, and use contractions. We're going to learn to use an apostrophe to shorten words. First we have a tutorial video. You can hit this link, go watch the tutorial video, and then come back to this one. So what is a contraction? A contraction is a short way to say two words. We're trying to stick some words together, okay? For example, the word is and not becomes isn't. This isn't how you imagined you were going to learn your lessons, correct? Is and not becomes isn't. So an apostrophe will fill the space of the missing letters. What does that mean? Let's take a look over here. I plus am. We're going to add these two words together. We're going to stick them to make them into one. I and am becomes I'm. And do you see over here we put an apostrophe to substitute for this A. So the A is gone and we have instead an apostrophe. So I and am becomes I'm. And this pattern will follow along for the rest of our examples. Let's take a look. We and are becomes we're. She and will becomes she'll. 
he and is will become he's. Do and not will become don't. Take a look at these ones and see if you can read them out loud to yourself and figure out what the contraction will be at the end. And they're already listed here for you, so if you can't guess it on your own, you have the answers over here. Alrighty, here are some more examples. For example, doesn't, a good student doesn't give up. And doesn't stands for does not. She'll, let's, do, let's look at she'll. She'll do all her work and bring it to school on time. She'll means she will. We stuck them together. We put an apostrophe to substitute for the missing letters W and I, and together it became she'll. Alrighty, here at the end again, we have a link for an online game, and you can tap this link, try out the game, and then come back for the next part. Alrighty, here we go. Part three of week one's English skills is grammar. We're going to be looking at articles. So what we're trying to do is identify and use articles, compare and explain the difference between the articles. So if you don't know what an article is, that's okay. We've got two little tutorial videos for you over here. Make sure you hit those YouTube links and then come back to this video. Make sure you pause this video. Remember the word pause from the vocabulary section? Alrighty, let's take a look at articles. An article is a word that comes before a noun. The boy. Here's our article right there. It's telling us who is this? This is the boy. A B. We have the. We have a. We also have an. An apple. So these are our three articles. So sometimes we don't know when to use a or an. So we have to ask ourselves, does the next word begin with a vowel sound? An A, an E, an I, an O, or a U? Those are our vowels. So if my noun, here's our noun over here. If our noun begins with a vowel, we have to use the article an. An apple. And if our noun begins with something that is not a vowel, we use a. A B. We'll see some more examples over here. When you play these online games, you'll be able to have some practice identifying different articles and knowing when to use them. All right, we've got two links here for you. Make sure you check out these links. And that is all for our first week of English. Thank you very much and have a good rest of the day.